Well, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Chairman, I think, I think we've now got to, uh, well, probably not the most politically party-based contentious part of the bill, uh, actually the bit that is uh, contentious within the House. Uh, and I just want to indicate that on this part of the bill and on the amendments which will uh, be flowing on it, that the, that the Labor Party uh, will be having a conscience vote uh, because this is, a, uh, this is a, um, a, a, it's an area of liquor licensing uh, and something which has traditionally been um, a, a conscience vote for uh, Labor members of Parliament. And, and there will be the ability, of course, uh, for Labor members to move amendments um, uh, to this, um, where uh, there will be uh, a range, uh, there will be a range of views, and I think it's, I think it's fair to say that uh, uh, my uh, younger, half my age colleague, uh, Ian Lees Galloway, and I have some views which differ um, on this uh, part of the legislation. My view is that, is that overall on this, uh, between the work of the minister and the work of the select committee. Um, it puts together a pretty sensible regime, uh, but there is not much doubt of the intention of this uh, is to liberalise uh, a set of rules and to make it easier to get, uh, to easier to get liquor licences and, in my opinion, uh, easier to get a more coherent system of dealing with liquor licences on a temporary basis uh, within... Um, uh, within particular areas uh, and to get some logical planning and some flow uh, around uh, not the you know not the big fan zones but the but the smaller the smaller areas uh, and to and to ensure that uh, all around the country i mean clearly not only in places where matches are being played um, even um, even in Tamuka or wherever it is that the minister uh, the member comes from um, then then there will be um, applications made under uh, this, this particular uh, section. Um, and, and, and even, even further, uh, Mr Speaker, even further, uh, Mr Speaker, this, and I'm, I'm um, of course I don't have the expertise as to, uh, that the attorney has uh, on what extraterritorial is, uh, but this, uh, this legislation will affect ships at sea, uh, certainly within uh, the, uh, the New Zealand territorial uh, waters and there will be an ability uh, for them uh, to have liquor licences uh, under the interpretation uh, clause uh, 57 uh, and the new clause. And I want to say to the uh, Rugby World Cup people, I think Theresa Walsh, I wasn't there for the uh, presentation myself, but I'm told uh, it, was a, it was a cogent presentation uh, on behalf of uh, Rugby World Cup 2011, uh, which made an argument uh, for cruise ships uh, to be able to uh, have, have, have licences uh, made under uh, Part 5 of this Rugby World Cup liquor licence. And, and um, what, what surprised me, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, was that it became clear to members of the committee um, that there's a, a, a theoretical, so I'm, I'm pretty certain it doesn't actually happen, uh, ruling that uh, cruise ships while in New Zealand waters can't have their bars open. Um, the, I mean, the idea, I mean, it, it's, a, it's sort of like a really interesting, uh, a really interesting concept, and I think it's one uh, for which we need to consider uh, wider legal change, uh, because if we're going to make New Zealand an attractive place uh, for cruise ships, I think one of the things that those of us who have cruised uh, know is that um, the consumption of alcohol... Um, cruised on cruise ships to make absolutely clear uh, to, my, to my younger colleagues who have different interpretations um, of, this, uh, of, 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 the, of those words, um, I, I was quite surprised to know uh, that um, generally uh, uh, ships within New Zealand, uh, cruise ships within New Zealand uh, do not have licences. Clearly the, you know, the ferries uh, and, and some other uh, uh, ships which ply the coast uh, do and, and, and that is something which is important. Um, there, there was, and I, and I, I want to thank, um, I think especially John Hay. I think John Hay and I uh, worked worked at work together pretty well on on uh, subclause three of 59 to make sure uh, that uh, permanent club charters were um, uh, or permanent clubs with permanent charters were not going to be adversely affected by their ability to make applications for this uh, special sort of licence. And I'm uh, 
Mr Chairman. Call Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Chairman, and I'm, I'm sure that the uh, Patoni Workingmen's Club, which is uh, certainly the, the, the biggest chartered club in the Wellington region and, and uh, one of the biggest uh, in the country, uh, will be pleased for this. Uh, but, but uh, Mr. Mr Chairman, um, we also recognise that in granting uh, these applications there was an element of risk. Uh, there, was a, there was a danger uh, to the uh, community that some less than Mr Chairman, um, is there a, I mean, I, I don't want to comment on what I'm looking at, Mr Chairman, but I'm not sure that it's entirely appropriate uh, for, for you to be addressed in that manner by the member. Um, uh, Mr, Mr, Mr Chairman, um, the, the question is what do you do with people who uh, breach their special licences, their uh, licences made under the Rugby World Cup legislation. Uh, and uh, what, we, uh, what we have made clear is that if they lose that licence, they lose their licence generally. They can't just revert back uh, to one of their old licences um, if, they, if they have a breach. Uh, and, and, um, and, and, Mr Chairman, it is easier uh, for a licensee to lose a licence under this legislation uh, than would generally be the case. So I, I do want to uh, sound a warning to people out there who are, who are, who are going to be running uh, under this legislation. And people don't have to. People can, if they want to, continue under their, uh, their, their, their current licences, with one exception, uh, and that is with venues. Uh, if if um, you're a, a Rugby World Cup venue with a current licence, uh, in fact, there will be a requirement to make an application under this legislation for a Rugby World Cup licence, uh, and, and that was made at the, uh, uh, at the request again of the company in order to make sure uh, that there was consistency. Uh, now, I, I, I also know that my colleagues, um, as members opposite do, uh, have different views as to the style of delivery uh, and the containers in which the liquor uh, should be delivered. I'm, I'm um, relatively old-fashioned uh, in these matters, and I, and I just hate drinking beer out of paper cups. I know that the chairman has a different view. Uh, the chairman has drunk quite a lot of beer out of paper cups, order, especially. Order, order, order. Just say to the member. Sorry. It's order. It's not appropriate to bring the chair into the debate. Right. Uh, whether the chair has or not is immaterial. Right. I'm here just merely to. Uh, to facilitate the debate. Right. The member sets high standards on, on the, the rules of the House and just want to make sure that he maintains his own standard. And by the way, I'm not a venue. When said you are a venue, the chair is not a venue. Member can continue. Yeah. Well, well, that could be interpreted in a number of ways. I, I think there's been some pretty exciting games played there, Mr Speaker. There's been some pretty exciting games played there. <laughs> Order. That's the member, there has been a ruling. The member can't go back and comment on it. The matter's closed. The member will continue. <laughs> well, well, if it was, Mr Speaker, it would be even more exciting. <laughs> uh, Mr, Mr, Speaker, Mr Speaker, Mr Chairman, thank you for that intervention. The point I'm making is that there are members, experienced members of this House, who have been to numbers of American football matches uh, and have, uh, and they've been discussing them with me recently, where there are large paper cups of beer uh, and, and they have consumed them. I, I just want to say that I'm sort of relatively old-fashioned. Uh, I, I, I don't mind a tinny, uh, but I do, I do prefer not a tinny house, not a tinny house, the, the cans. Well, no, I, I, the generation gap here is awful. The generation gap... I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind drinking beer out of a can, is the point, is the point that I'm making. Uh, I prefer I prefer to have it I prefer to have it uh, from a glass, but certainly disagree uh, with the in, with the, with the members, including Judith Collins, uh, who wanted to force people uh, to drink uh, flat beer uh, out of uh, out of the pourers that then have to be uh, carried round uh, in that form. I think uh, I think that would make us look a pretty Mickey Mouse operation. And I want to say to Murray McCulley, well done. To Murray McCulley, well done, because what he did was that he stood up to Judith Collins. There's not many people have done that. Not many, not many, peop not many people uh, have stood up uh, in that way. Um, I, I, I want to uh, now uh, refer especially to clause 
uh, 73 uh, around